Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I'm absolutely obsessed with smoothies. I make them, I buy them, and I try to make them as healthy as possible. Are you into the smoothie craze? Have you tried making them? Have you gotten really creative and try to really pack them with as many nutrients as possible? Well, that is my weekly quest. And I decided I needed to learn more and I wanted to share more with you. So I called upon Jackie Bryan. Now, many of you may know her from our Comedy Cures Health Builder series that we do for free every month. You can sign up for that on our website, comedycures.org, or you may have read about her through our Comedy Cures research study that Jackie was at the epicenter of, and we've had incredible results on that study. So I called upon Jackie, who is a registered nurse, a certified nutritional specialist, a whole health educator, and a certified health coach to stop by Beating Cancer Daily today and teach us all about smoothies. Jackie, welcome. Oh, Saren, thank you so much for having me. You know, I I just want to say what an honor it is to be invited into your podcast. This is just so exciting. And I, I think we equally share a love of smoothies. And so hopefully I can shed some light for your uh, people that are listening today. I cannot wait. I am taking notes right now. Awesome. Okay. So first of all, when I say the word smoothie, I smile. You know, I, I, I conjure up visions of sitting on the beach with a cool acai banana smoothie in my hand. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. What's your favorite smoothie, Saren? I just made one this weekend with all kinds of berries and almond milk. And then I actually pureed a bunch of nuts and put that in there too. And then a little bit of vegan protein powder. I like very complicated smoothies. I like science experiment smoothies, but I'm not so sure that's the best way to do it. So that's why I want you to teach me what ingredients should I be putting in? What should I be putting in? How much should I drink at one time? Well, these are great questions. I first, I'm going to say I'm pretty impressed with your uh, creativity with your smoothies. So we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that in the in this podcast. But smoothies are becoming increasingly popular. Uh, but just because it says smoothie doesn't always mean that it's healthy. And so your questions are are important, right? It's important for everybody to understand what they're putting into their smoothies. Today, we're going to talk about the benefits of smoothies, how to make them, even how to order them, because we have some pretty fancy smoothie shops in our areas that we can we can definitely reap the benefits from. Um, we're going to talk about the smoothies that can be incredibly health enhancing, and we want to make them that way. We don't want them to hurt our health, and there are types of smoothies that can. And so let's let's start off with the health benefits because I always like to start off in a positive way, right? So smoothies are a fantastic way to flood your body with antioxidants. And uh, one of the things that antioxidants do is that they can fight the effects of aging. They can boost immunity. It's one of the reasons they're so popular because those antioxidants that we put in the smoothies can neutralize free radicals. And free radicals are not, you know, people from the 60s. <laughs> free radicals are actually 
cells that are unstable that can cause damage to parts of our body. And certainly we don't want those. And and for anybody that's living with cancer or has had cancer, we're, we pay particular attention to those. One of the things I love about smoothies is it makes it easy for us to consume the nine to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables that are recommended each day. But some of you might say, oh, come on, Jackie, I heard that we only needed five a day, uh, when in fact, we know that that's the bare minimum. And as we age, it's even more important for us to get antioxidants in because while we have the ability to produce some antioxidants, that diminishes as we age. So what I like people to understand is if we can get antioxidants in our nutrition, that's going to be really beneficial. The other thing about smoothies that are is really helpful is that it gives us the chance to sneak vegetables into our diet that we may otherwise not consume. And I, I'm speaking about my 13-year-old daughter. Wait, Jackie, I forgot. I put spinach into that smoothie and I also put a banana. And I oh. remember my husband going, spinach with blueberries? And I channeled you. I was like, I oh. think Jackie would tell me to do this because it's another color. <laughs> It's it's like the stealth smoothie maker. <laughs> That's like you're you're going in and you're finding ways to sneak in powerful nutrients that are going to make people feel better, look better, and even heal, uh, which I think is incredible. But the other thing about smoothies, in addition to being able to hide those vegetables you might not enjoy when they're sitting on your plate at dinner, uh, is that they are loaded with fiber, right? Those fruits and vegetables that you're putting in there actually have fiber in it. And I think a fiber podcast may be a great thing in the future at some point because it is such an important component of good nutritional health. Oh, I totally want to do that. I was actually thinking about it when I was having some oat bran and and I was also thinking about putting fiber into the, like just powdered fiber into the smoothie. And I was like, do I need that? Should I do it? Is this natural? So uh, 100%, we're making the commitment today. All right. All right. I'm going to put it on the list. So what's recommended for fiber each day is around 28 to 35 grams. Uh, and so sometimes that's hard to keep track. But what I recommend is people look up some of their favorite dishes and see where their fiber is sneaking in and then see where maybe they can do a better job. And as just a little recap as to what fiber does, it not only does it keep your bowel movements regular, right? We've We've done the poop podcast. We understand the benefits of that. Wait a minute. If you have not heard Jackie's podcast on Beating Cancer Daily about your poop story, you have to go back and listen to it. It is riveting. I didn't know poop was so interesting till Jackie taught me all about it. So go back and check out the poop episode. I love how you said that, the poop story. <laughs> well, that's what you taught me, that my poop could tell my health story. It's so fascinating. I love it. So in addition to your poop story, fiber is going to help remove toxins from your body. It helps lower cholesterol. It balances your blood sugar. And again, this is such a great, rich topic to, to cover. It's not what we're going to focus on today, but just know the smoothies are often packed with fiber. The smoothies also give you a very quick, healthy source of energy. And I actually recommend smoothies for some of my athletes a couple hours before they work out. I usually have them go lower in the fat and lower in the protein and then bulk up some of the fruits and vegetables. It's an excellent source of fiber for them. Smoothies are easily digestible. They decrease the workload on the gut. Some of you may find that they're helpful if your gut just needs a break. Um, sometimes our digestive tract after traveling or maybe having had an illness, we're just not able to feel like we break down and digest foods properly. Sometimes smoothies are a nice way to transition back to a more solid diet. It's one of the reasons when you're at the hospital and say you've had surgery, they, they start you at a clear liquid diet and then they advance accordingly. Smoothies are a nice way to give your gut a little bit of a break. 
Another area that people use smoothies for is that it can help with weight loss. And I will say only if it's done correctly. And replacing a meal with a smoothie can cut back on calories. But the key with this meal replacement idea is that you know what is in your smoothie. That's the most important thing. So this is what we're going to talk about next is what are some of the common ingredients in homemade and store-bought smoothies? So fruits are one that we often, whenever we think of smoothies, we often think of fruits. And those are common fruits like berries, bananas, apples, peach, mango, pineapple, acai, um, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, Vegetables like kale and spinach, arugula, microgreens, avocado, beetroot, cauliflower, carrots. I mean, Really, you can go into your refrigerator and throw in anything green that looks that looks good that could add some fiber and nutritional uh, benefits to your body. You just totally blew my mind with that. I have a fruit drawer and I have a vegetable drawer. And I knew about broccoli, cucumber, thought about avocado and spinach, but you just named so many more things that I would never have thought to put into that smoothie. It's, you know, this is where the creativity comes in. And the other part is what's in season, right? So that's the other thing. Like so many of us think we have to just get the the frozen fruits and vegetables at the store. And while those are fantastic options, you can also use what's in your pantry just to enhance and change the flavor, give you some variety. And keep in mind that the more that we vary the colors that are in the smoothie, the better the health benefits, right? So every color has a different type of phytochemical or phytonutrient that protects you from those free radicals. Uh, The other thing that I heard you mention earlier is putting nuts and seeds in there into, into the smoothies. That adds in a little bit of protein and fat, and that can really help with satiety for smoothies. So things like almond butter or peanut butter, walnut butter, sunflower butter, um, chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, you know, those are different options that that work really well. And I don't know, some people maybe even consider adding in herbs and spices. So uh, ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, cocoa powder, cocoa nibs, parsley, basil. One of my favorite things to add into my smoothie is I make a golden milk smoothie, which is delicious. I do a pineapple, a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of banana, and then I'll add in um, turmeric, a little bit of ginger. And it is absolutely delicious. Does coconut have any value? Because I often see that they say they add coconut. Yes. So coconut, a lot of times people add coconut, uh, oat milk, almond milk, uh, because they don't consume dairy. I'm I'm one of those people. Coconut milk has a lot of nutritional values, uh, not only many nutrients, but it's also a medium chain fatty acid, which has been shown to help with gut healing, reducing inflammation in the body, things like that. So there are some really good components to it. Uh, It just depends on the form that it comes in. Nutritional and herbal supplements are really beneficial for some of these smoothies, and we often don't think about them. So you could add in things like spirulina, bee pollen, matcha powder. My 13-year-old daughter is so hung up on matcha drinks. Uh, You could do protein powders and you can choose one that really suits your taste buds, but you also want to look at the ingredient list to make sure that it has the highest qualities in there for, for giving you the nutrition that you need. The liquid portion of smoothies is also something that we need to think about. Water, fruit juice, vegetable juice, milk, non-dairy milk, like coconut, almond, oat. You could do water. Some people do coffee or iced tea. The the options are really endless. Uh, My husband makes a kombucha smoothie. So he he pours in some of his kombucha and it's got a little bit of a sweet tart taste and he loves it. There are places that put in certain sweeteners. And this is where we want to put the red flag up and we want to really pay attention. Uh, Things like maple syrup may be added, raw sugar, honey, uh, then more natural sources like pitted dates. Uh, There are some fruit juice concentrates. Some people will use an organic stevia. And then there's those that put ice cream and sorbet in there. So if weight loss is one of your goals, you really want to know what's in that smoothie. 
I actually put in pitted dates. Should I not have put in pitted dates? I just wanted to understand that. Right. So that's an excellent question. So my preference for anything that's going to sweeten your smoothie is that it's a natural sweetener. So dates would fall into the natural category and then moving more away from the ice cream and the sorbet, right? Because sugar is what we call an anti-nutrient. It doesn't offer us any nutritional value whatsoever. And it's an anti-nutrient because it actually takes away from our our health, right? It, it, it needs calcium, magnesium, and many other minerals and vitamins to be processed in our body, which means it robs it from other areas. So if you want to keep your smoothie healthy, uh, then keep the sugar out of it. Not natural sugars of fruit, but the sugars that are, are processed and chemicalized, the, the white stuff. That's what we really want to kind of steer clear of. So can I OD on the natural sugar? Can I put too many berries or too many dates? Everything in moderation, right? I know we've heard that saying for for everything. If you eat five bananas, that's going to be too much. <laughs> One banana is is enough. So we we want to do enough just to make it sweet enough that it's very palatable and enjoyable, but not so sweet that we're going to become overly accustomed to that taste and need everything to be sweet. So am I trying to balance the berries against the nut butter or the nuts so that I have the protein and the fat with the sugar. So it's like an high school chemistry experiment. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things, and I was going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later in the, in this chat, but it's a perfect time to bring it in is that one thing that we can do to help balance blood sugar is by combining certain foods, right? So a fat, a fiber and a protein will help eliminate sugar spikes. So we can talk about some of the best ways that we can build a smoothie. Uh, and, and some of the advice that I can share with you is to, to bring in a little bit of fruit to bring in a little bit of fat and bring in a little bit of protein so that it's not going to spike your sugar in a way that could be harmful. And and even some natural fruits can spike your sugar, which is why I want people to combine them as a fat, a fiber, and a protein. Um, Did that answer your question? That is so fascinating. That's instinctively what I was trying to do. But just to see that you really should be conscious about that, because I didn't want that sugar spike, even though it was natural. Right, right, exactly. And and actually, you can feel it, right? When you just have something that is overly sweet, you can feel your body change. Uh, you know, that's what's that's what's pretty amazing about your body is it's ever, ever changing. You know, some other things that people put in smoothies, maybe a, a little bit different are things like cottage cheese, vanilla extract. Some people put oats and beans in there, silken tofu, or even yogurts, right? Those are some of the things that you may find in your smoothies. There, there are different types of smoothies and and most smoothies are classified as a beverage and not a food. And they usually fall into one or two categories with some crossover. The the first category is fruit smoothies, which is what most of us think of, I think, when we think about smoothies. And those are blended with fruit juice or water, in some cases with ice cream or milk. And then there's the green smoothies. Those are ones that have been made with leafy greens, maybe a little bit of fruit that's blended with a, a juice or a water or a milk. These ones tend to be kind of heavier in the vegetables than than the regular fruit smoothies that we think of, but they add in just a little hint of fruit just for the sweetness, just to give you a teeny bit of sweetness. And then there's the protein smoothies that uh, usually start off with a fruit or a vegetable, and then they add liquid and they do a protein source like to have, as we just talked about, a combination of all three of these because there's nutritional benefits to to all of them, the, the, the fruits, the vegetables, the protein, and even a little bit of, of fat. Uh, Sarah, one of the questions I get asked by people a lot is, you know, Jackie, what's better, having a smoothie or juicing? Right. And that's a it's it's a common question that I get asked. And so I thought I'd just describe what the difference is between having a smoothie and juicing. And that way people can make their own decision on what may work best for them. But a smoothie is made by placing all the ingredients, all the parts and pieces of the fruit into a blender. 
mixing them together. Some people use like a, a multi-serving blender, like a, you know, a Vitamix or even like a single serving one, such as a, a Magic Bullet or a Ninja. Uh, the results are going to be similar, either one that you use because you're putting the whole fruit in there. You're putting the whole vegetable in there. It's going into the mix. You're going to get the fiber and hopefully, you know, the the fat and the protein all together. And and we just talked about how important fiber is. So you can see that the, the smoothie is going to give you a big bang for your nutritional buck. Now, if somebody juices, the juicing actually filters out a lot of the fiber from the fruits and vegetables, and it leaves you with just the liquid juice and fibrous pulp is usually discarded. And some of the health benefits are in that fibrous pulp. Now, I am not saying that I'm against juicing because there are some really great health benefits to juicing. Personally, my preference is the smoothie because it gives me a little bit more fiber. It can deliver the protein and the fat. And there's a lot of health benefits to that. And and I think from a satiety standpoint, which is very important to me, I don't like feeling too hungry. Um, I really like feeling satisfied. And that's important to me, which is why smoothies work so well. We, we've we've sort of sung the praises of the smoothies right now. And so I thought I'd just maybe talk for a minute, if it's okay with you, about some of the cons. Like what what is it? What would be a potential negative about a smoothie? I would love that. But could I just ask a question? What about the pits and the seeds? Is it are there certain pits or seeds that you should take out before you make a smoothie? So I don't always put my seeds in and it really depends on the fruit. You know, it it depends on, so like I would not put an avocado pit in there, uh, but I have no problem throwing flax seeds in there and hemp seeds and things like that. Uh, I might pour the apple before I put the apple in. Uh, just because sometimes they, those little seeds sneak through the, the blades of the blender and may not get broken down. And, and I don't necessarily want to be eating the seed that way. Uh, it's not that it would hurt me, but it's just something I may choose not to do. Uh, but people can experiment just to see what works for them. There are some super turbo blenders out there that you could put, you know, a tree in it and it would (laughs) make it into it. It would make it into a smoothie. I mean, that's, that's something that people would need to do. I know some of the, the smaller single serving size smoothie makers might not have that same power. So that would be something to consider. What about the rind of the orange or the lemon or the lime and those little seeds? Should I be taking those seeds out? Should I be peeling those or I just put the whole lemon and lime in or the whole orange? So I throw like clementines into mine or I'll throw a little tangerine in there and I don't worry about the seeds. I take the rind off sometimes or most of the time because I don't care for the taste in the smoothie. I don't think it would, you know, cause a problem, but uh, you know, I'd, I'd prefer not to have that in there for myself. Uh, But I think again, it's a preference as to what people enjoy for, for taste. Um, I think that's really, I think that's really important. some of the other things with the smoothie, some of the cons, is that okay if I get into the cons now? I love cons. I love devil's advocate. All right. So here's a couple things that I want people to be mindful of when we think about smoothies. So satiety w- could be an issue. Um, I have some clients that I work with that just have a difficult time feeling satisfied with just a smoothie in the morning for breakfast. So keep in mind that the way that you compose and put together your smoothie is going to make a difference, much like what we talked about combining a fat, such as a nut butter, or even you could drizzle a little olive oil in there, a little bit of protein, which could come from your protein powder, or even some of that nut butter, and then some of the fiber or the carbohydrate that's in the fruit, right? So those are different sources for some of the ways that you can get that protein, fat, and fiber in. Um, the, the satiety piece is also, in some cases, people need to chew their food. <laughs> and so smoothies are often you know, satisfying for a shorter period of time, but maybe eating a piece of fruit like an apple or a banana might give uh, somebody a better feeling of satisfaction for a longer period of time. And again, you're that science experiment. You have to figure out what works best for you. Another thing to think about is if you do drink a smoothie alongside a meal, this may cause you to consume too many calories. I think 
people are unaware that some of these smoothies, while they are healthy, can pack over a thousand calories per smoothie. So you you really want to know your smoothie source, what's in it. And, and I don't want people to feel like they have to track calories all the time. But if you're not replacing a meal with a smoothie and you're using it as a complement to a meal, I think it's important to know how many calories you're consuming because we want to eat the proper amount to nourish our body and not overconsume because we don't want to gain too much weight. Um, if somebody is trying to gain weight, then that is a good strategy, right? So have a smoothie in addition to your meal that will give you additional calories that may not make you feel over full. So that's a strategy I use with people that are underweight and struggling with um, gaining excess body weight if they've lost a, a significant amount due to a treatment or some other experience in their life. And the other piece that we sort of tapped into is with some smoothies, we want to be careful not to spike our blood sugar. And that goes back to that food combining of a fat, a fiber, and a protein. That's going to be really helpful. If I can leave you with some final smoothie thoughts, you just want to watch your consumption. When you drink liquids like a smoothie, you tend to consume the calories pretty quickly and you can end up feeling hungry. You know, those people that when you eat too quickly or you don't pay attention to it, you look over and you're like, oh, who ate that bag of chips? Oh, maybe I did. Maybe I ate the bag of chips, right? So we just need to pay attention to what we're eating. Uh, so when we're we're drinking a smoothie, we want to do it slowly so our gut has time to register to tell our brain that it's full. And that's usually around 20 minutes for some people. And again, it goes back to anything in life that we want to do that that enhances our health. We have to pay attention. A good rule of thumb is that if you're using a smoothie as a snack, 200 to 300 calories with 10 grams of protein in it is a really good snack option. So you can sort of portion it out, maybe cut it in half if you've made a big thing of, of uh, smoothies so that you, you can cut it in half, give one to your partner, or even just save it for later in the day. If you're using a smoothie as a meal, uh, another good rule of thumb is to have that between 400 and 800 calories, depending upon your cal caloric needs for the day, and have that provide at least 20 grams of protein. And you can figure that out by looking at your the nut sources you add or the protein sources that you add. That makes it a little bit easier for you to, to understand where the protein sources is coming from in your day. And then steering clear of those added sugars. You know, we talked about it being an anti-nutrient earlier on. And for those of you that know me, and Sarah, and I know you know me, that I spend a lot of time talking about sugar as an anti-nutrient. So when you're laying that foundation for your smoothie, when you're making it, make the smoothie with water, almond milk, coconut milk, instead of a fruit juice or sugar-laden juice. Or you could even try and experiment with a kombucha like my husband does. Um, and there are some kombucha is another topic we could we could cover, but there are some kombuchas that are better than others. So you want to read label so that you understand what the better sources are. Uh, but those are some of my recommendations for getting the best bang for your buck when it comes to smoothie nutrition. So fascinating. I didn't hear you mention yogurt, and I put a little yogurt in non dairy. But what do you think about yogurt in the smoothie? Oh, yes, that's a great option for a good source of protein, some calcium. You know, there's different options. There's cow's milk yogurt. There's also, you know, non-dairy yogurt, such as coconut, almond, cashew. Uh, there's soy. There's lots of different options. So people should should definitely consider those as great options because not only do they give you a good protein source, but oftentimes they have um, much needed probiotics that support gut health and heal which is a real important part of our overall health and well-being. So that's a great uh, thing to add into smoothies for sure. Just be sure that the yogurt that you choose doesn't have added sugar in it, which goes back to my whole sugar, the anti-nutrient talk. Yeah. Is there a certain time of day that it's better to have a smoothie? And then also how many a day should we have? Depends. If you're using it as a meal replacement, then I would say no more than two as a meal replacement and then make a healthy dinner. If you're using it in addition to the meals that you're already eating, I would say one a day is fine. It's again, a wonderful way to flood your body with excellent nutrients that can heal your body. Jackie, you always enlighten us and you make it so fun. 
And we have a little tradition where I always try to tell Jackie a joke about the subject that we're talking about. So Jackie, may I tell you a joke? Oh, I would love to hear it. This is really silly jokes, guys. We didn't sit down at Comedy Cares and spend a half an hour writing jokes on smoothies. This is very silly little joke. What do you call a sad strawberry? I don't know. What do you call a sad strawberry? A blueberry. No. <laughs> that is very cute. <laughs> I figured because my primary ingredient were berries that I had to give you a berry joke back. Thank you. You always laugh. You're so kind. These are very silly jokes, guys. But what I want to say is that, Jackie, this was such a wealth of information. And I would love to hear if you have any great ingredients that we didn't talk about. You can write it to me or record it. Go to the Comedy Cures Foundation at comedycures.org and hit the record button in the podcast menu or hit the contact button and write it to me. We'd love to hear your feedback. If you have topics that you are just burning for Jackie to talk about now today, we said fiber and Jackie, I thought also probiotics would be a good topic. We will take your suggestions and hopefully Jackie will come back and do more of these fascinating episodes. We always love when you come. If you do want to know more about Jackie Bryan, you can write to the Comedy Cares Foundation and we will send you her signature with all her links to her website and to her social media so you can get on Jackie's mailing list and find out all the great things that she's doing. But we would love you to attend the next Health Builder series, which is traditionally Monday mornings, Eastern time, late Monday morning, Eastern time at 1130. But if you go to the Comedy Cures website, right on the homepage, scroll down just a little bit under the podcast, and you'll see a sign up sheet, four little questions, and we will send you the link and the updates on what different topics Jackie's doing to enlighten us. And it's a longer form than the podcast, and you don't want to miss one of them. Jackie's such a wealth of information. So Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Sarah. And this was amazing. So much fun. You are the best. I hope that you go make a smoothie right now and think of us when you're making it and let me know what great ingredients you're putting in. Have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this podcast, then I'd love to ask for you to go to comedycures.org and check out our membership circle levels. You will find even more resources and more programming, like our live virtual Q&A sessions with me, our live Comedy Cures events with our very talented comedians, live health builder workshops with Jackie Bryan hosted by me, a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. It's really an exciting community. So please consider becoming a member, giving it as a gift, telling your friends, telling your hospital support group all about this community. I can't think of a more empowering way to go through a cancer journey or your survivorship or your caregiving experience then with us at Beating Cancer Daily. It's truly an honor to serve you. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.